rise for our invocation from uh, our chaplain, Charles Creed, please. Thank you. Let us pray. Our, our wonderful God, we ask you to be with us this day and every day as we seek to serve our patients, serve our community, and serve one another. What a privilege it is to do so, but we need your help to do it. Without you, well, sometimes we sort of run out of gas, get a little tired. In those moments, we pray especially that you will protect us, give us strength, skill, and sometimes, well, all the time, a lot of grace. We ask for your blessing over this meeting, over all of the people here and those who couldn't make it today. We ask you to bless us now in the name above every name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Sarasota Memorial Public Hospital Board, and I'll start out with a public comment. Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard in this meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, or other persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board, the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments on or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. And we'll start with the approval of the orders of the day. Do I have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. If there are no corrections, they're approved as presented. Then we'll have the approval of the, uh, I guess we need to vote on that. Um, all those in favor of the uh, orders of the day, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now we'll do approval of the minutes of our meeting of July 17th. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second on that. Any corrections or comments? Seeing none, uh, the minutes are approved. And I don't think we have any board reports. So we'll start today with a, uh, a very important event. We'll have the introduction of the internal medicine residents, and I would like to introduce the, introduce the program director of the inter, internal medicine residency program, Dr. Wilhelmina Bizaromesh. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and members of the Sarasota Memorial Hospital Public Board and hospital leaders, it is a pleasure to introduce to you our inaugural class of internal medicine residents. As you recall, we had over 4,000 applications for the 13 residents that are joining me today. In just seven weeks that they started, as you recall, on July 1st, we've already seen a tremendous impact on the community by the excellent care that they provide. Um, obviously, under the supervision of our exceptional faculty, some of which are also here today. We've already received letters from patients acknowledging the great impact that they've had on their lives. We thank you for the great support that you have provided our program for your vision in helping us get this program started. 
Um, today, I also would like to invite and acknowledge Dr. Karen Hammond, our Associate Program Director, who will join me in presenting our residents to you. Hello, I'm Talal al Kayali. I graduated from Jordan University of Science and Technology. I wanted to also add that Dr. al Kayali has just had Two presentations, possibly third, accepted at the National Meeting of the American College of Gastroenterologists that will be presented this October um, in Orlando. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Baha Emmer. I went to Saber University School of Medicine from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Nice to meet you. Uh, Dr. Amr uh, volunteered at a pain management clinic while he was in Massachusetts, worked with AIDS prevention programs, tutored in medical school, and is a member of the Alpha Omega Phi Honor and Service Society. Hi, guys. I'm Caitlin Bass. I'm also a graduate of Saber University School of Medicine. I wanted to also mention that um, uh, Dr. Bass has volunteered extensively in some women's health clinic in Gainesville that were for the underserved. She was a teaching assistant in neuroscience and psychology, and one of her hobbies is that she worked as an editor for the medical student press. So, welcome. <laughs> Dr. Derek Calkins is post-call, and we, as you know, we have duty hour restrictions, but I do have to tell you a little bit about Dr. Calkins. He um, graduated from LECOM here in Bradenton um, and is from the Orlando region. He actually volunteered as a tutor for medical students in the Manatee School for the Arts here in Bradenton. Um, previously, he was a, a mechanical engineer, and actually his whole family is in the Orlando area. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Ajoma Eccles James. I graduated from American University of the Caribbean and I am originally from Cleveland, Ohio by way of San Francisco and thank you so much for making this opportunity available to us, thank you. So just a little bit more about uh, Dr. James. She has volunteered for the Ministry of Health in the country of Sierra Leone, conducted bench work in the area of HIV and malaria, is a member of the Alpha Omega Phi Honor and Service Society as well as well as a member of the Black Medical Student Association and AMA Student Judiciary Committee. Good afternoon, my name is Elena Drasimova. I graduated from St. George's University, and thank you so much for the opportunity to work here. So Elena um, actually volunteered as an English teacher and an activity leader at children's camps in St. Petersburg, Russia. She has worked extensively with underserved population and the homeless. She's actually conducted bench research in the area of neurology. So, welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Jenkins, or Christopher Jenkins. I go by Chris. Well, a friend of mine, another friend, calls me Curtis for no reason. Um, I'm from Carrollton, Georgia, a small, small country town outside of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, home of the Falcons. Um, I went to uh, Ross University School of Medicine, um, and I'm extremely excited to be here now. I thank you all very much. We're going to work on that Falcons thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris also tutored anatomy during school, conducted project to provide access for HIV testing to an underserved population and served as president of his martial arts club, Taekwondo and Defense Self-Defense Instructor, and is a what level black belt? Fourth degree. Fourth degree black belt. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mallory Kimsey. I'm from Palm Harbor, Florida, just up the road. I graduated from Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale. And Mallory uh, also has worked extensively um, with the underserved at the Samaritan Free Clinic. She also tutored anatomy, and as she said, um, she is uh, from the region. Her whole family is in the Clearwater area. Hi, 
Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Marilyn Mosquera. I graduated from the University of Central Florida. Uh, I'm sorry, St. George's University of Medicine, but uh, my undergrad, I went to University of Central Florida. I'm thinking of Orlando. That's where I live, but I'm Colombian, so. <laughs> and a little bit more about Marilyn. She volunteered and organized weekly visits uh, for the orphanage in Grenada. She is interested in primary care and has volunteered extensively in free medical clinics. And as she said, her whole family's in Orlando, so. Local. Hello, my name is Alessia Petrenko. I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario, and went to medical school at Michigan State University. Thank you. So Alessia also volunteered extensively uh, and worked in orphanages in the Ukraine, and she has quite an extensive research uh, portfolio for both bench and clinical experience. So, welcome. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Belisa Ramos. I'm from Puerto Rico, and I went to the Dominican Republic, uh, Universidad Iberoamericana. Belisa, you could have made it taller for you on the short one. <laughs> uh, Belisa uh, volunteered extensively to provide first aid and necessities to the homeless in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, conducted research in HIV, and was a professional basketball player before joining us. And her grandparents live in Orlando. Good afternoon. My name is Juan Ricardo. I went to Pontificia Universidad Católica Madre Maestra in Santiago, Dominican Republic. Uh, I'm extremely happy for this opportunity and to be here and join this organization. So, uh, Dr. Ricardo conducted research in the prevalence of psychiatric disorders and substance abuse patients. Um, and he also participated and coordinated numerous medical mission trips to the Dominican Republic. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Ahmed Salem. I graduated from Suez Canal University. And thanks for the opportunity of being part of SMH. Dr. Salem volunteered extensively for the Egyptian Association of American Medical Training and Research, assisting Egyptian medical students. He has conducted a, a significant volume of research in gastroenterology and surgical oncology, actually has worked with Dr. Ken Meredith, who's here at SMH, mm. um, so welcome. So all residency programs have what's called a chief resident. In, in the discipline of internal medicine, traditionally, this is an individual that ha chooses to do an additional year. So they've already completed their residency, but they are committed to teaching and those complete an additional year. Um, we were very fortunate um, to have Dr. Yes, my name is Upali Ranasinghe. I graduated from uh, Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine here in uh, Bradenton. And uh, again, very uh, proud to be part of uh, Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And I recently joined July 3rd as a chief resident and hospitalist. Thank you. And Dr. Renasinghe has a long, uh, has been in the Bradenton area pretty much for most of his adult life. So we are delighted that he's here and uh, uh, is part of our institution. So these are our inaugural residents. Thank you for the opportunity of, of presenting them to you today. It's really uh, been a wonderful journey. And like I said, we, we are so proud of each one of them for the many things that they're accomplishing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both very much. And to all of you, welcome. We're glad you're here. David? So, um, Mr. Carter, you're going to come join me down here. We're going to do some uh, Excel awards. But before we do that, just want to thank you all 
for being here. No, you can get up. That's okay. Yeah. I didn't mean to catch you. Um, and uh, it's been a pleasure getting to meet you uh, guys and gals over the last um, seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven weeks. So uh, we look forward to, to getting to know you better over the next three years. So thank you very much for all being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, well, I cleared out like three rows of people there. <laughs> <laughs> so we are... Um, uh, we, we have the um, opportunity today to recognize um, some uh, Excel Award winners and Hero Awards, and so I'm going to kick it off uh, and invite uh, Brian Kiesler to come up and join me. Brian, you here? Yeah. So, Brian uh, Kiesler is our Excel, August Excel Award winner. He's a lead MRI technician in radiology services and has worked for Sarasota Memorial since 2000. Brian's nominations describe an employee who goes above and beyond for patients, family, patients, families, and colleagues. He's an experienced technologist, his coworkers agree, and his knowledge of MRI is exceptional. Brian often performs the more difficult MRI scans with more complex protocols. His coworkers say he doesn't hesitate to reach out to physicians for additional information to ensure his patients are scanned in the safest manner. He helps with ACR and accreditation of MRIs at the outpatient locations and helps staff implement new protocols whenever needed. One coworker says, Brian is the most compassionate technologist I've ever met. He's professional and always a good, in a good mood. Others confirm he makes sure patients are comfortable and their, and their questions are answered and he's happy to teach and share knowledge with everyone. Brian's so deserving of this award. Brian, thank you so thank much you for everything you do for, our, for us each and every day. Okay, so Mr. Carter, you next up. Here, do this. Turn around, bro, yep. just like you were. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Excel Award. Excel represent the recipients are employees who are models of excellence and consistently demonstrate the mission, vision, and values of our organization. They are superior performers that make an extra effort in the quality and care of our patients and families in the community. The hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System recognizes you, Brian, with the Excel Award for the month of August 2017. Thank you for your continued dedication to excellence, and it's signed by David Verinder, the president and CEO, and myself as chairman of the board. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I, I, I am deeply honored and humbled to, uh, to have this award. It's quite a blessing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, uh, happy to uh, announce our Physician Excel Award winner for the second quarter of 2017. And I'd like to invite Dr. Hardy Schwartz to come up and join me. Ms. Schwartz. There you go. Here. <laughs> Hardy Schwartz is our Physician Excel Award winner for the second quarter of 2017. Dr. Schwartz is a cardiologist and medical director of non-invasive cardiology and has been on our staff since 2003. Intelligent and approachable, supportive, informative, calm, cool, and collected, even in most stressful situations. Almost infallible patients, those are a few of the ways Dr. Schwartz is described by his peers. They also praise his open communication and mutual respect for coworkers. He's highly approachable doctor who goes out of his way to give positive feedback. His mentoring, his mentoring manner encourages conversation and learning. He, said he always has time for questions and follow-up skills are impeccable, his team says. Dr. Schwartz is someone who we turn to for advice and guidance. His peers also enjoy his monthly at staff education and admire his efforts to ensure highest quality within the department. Dr. Schwartz meticulously researches, often on his own time, to help secure the, the most advanced resources for our department. His peers summarize that he is a role model for all physicians. 
We are all thankful to have you here. Father, thank you so much for everything you do for us. We appreciate it. Okay. The Physician, Physician Excel Award. Excel recipients are physicians who are recognized as role models of excellence, superior in performance. They are leaders who consistently demonstrate a collaborative team approach in their work. These individuals strengthen the quality of patient care and the image of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System in our community. The hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System recognizes you, Dr. Schwartz, with the Excel Award for the second quarter of 2017. Thank you for your continued dedication to excellence. And signed by David Verinder, our CEO, and myself as chair of the board. Congratulations and thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Party led by the <laughs> Come on, come on, do the speech. <laughs> I'll keep it brief. Um, I think it was actually um, very telling that I, I got to be here right before the residents were introduced. It reminded me, I, I graduated medical school in 1997, and to this day I remember one of my most influential mentors saying, Hardy, if you just speak to your patients and examine them, 99.9% .9 of the time everything will work out fine, even when you think it's catastrophe. And that served me very well. Unfortunately, nobody in med school told me how much the ancillary staff, technicians, nurses, and everyone else, quote, below the pay grade, um, plays such an important role in your life and your success. And it took me a long time to learn that. And this award, thank you very much, I'm humbled, teaches me that I'm just barely starting to get that part right. And I'll keep working on it. Thanks. So next we have our Leadership Award for the third quarter of 2017. I'd like to invite Joni Pageant to come up and join me. Joni. So Joni uh, Pageant is our Leadership Award winner for the third quarter. Joni is a manager in CDI and Revenue Integrity. She's been with Sarasota Memorial since 2005. Joni's persistence in finding best solutions sets a high bar, and that's a pretty good, great place to start uh, for your nominations. Joni leads our revenue integrity and, docu and clinical documentation integrity teams, which provide documentation of medical records, quality improvement, and revenue charging compliance. Her coworkers describe her as a valuable leader, mentor, and team player. Her style isn't to command, ex her style isn't to command excellence, they say, instead, Joni builds excellence around her. She leads by example and puts in as much time as it takes to ensure the job is done to perfection. She takes time to mentor her team and encourage her professional development. Joni exceeds her leadership role in, role in many ways. Her coworkers agree. As an example, they cite her recent travel abroad. Through her missionary work to Africa, Joni was able to, to help and mentor many young school children one co-worker summarized, she has a very giving heart. Joni, thank you so much for everything you do for our community and our hospital. Thank you. Congratulations. The Leadership Award. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. The Hospital Board and Administrative Staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System present to you, Joni, with the Leadership Award for the third quarter 2017, with thanks for your continued dedication of excellence. And it's signed by David Verinder, our CEO, and myself as chair of the board. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Joni, may you say a couple words? Um, well, thank you for this award. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure to work with my team every day. They are outstanding. Uh, a compassionate, caring people who do a great job, and that's why I'm up here, because of them. So um, I've also had um, many opportunities at SMH that I'm very grateful for, and great mentors and leaders along the way who have actually, you know, pushed me sometimes outside my comfort zone, but that's what helped me grow. 
as a person and as a leader. So I'm very grateful for them. And I've been here for 12 years, and I, I can actually say that I've seen lots and lots of changes at SMH, but the one thing that I think hasn't changed are the people. They're really caring and outstanding uh, employees, and I'm just very proud to be a part of it. So thank you for this award. So we have also a Hero Award uh, for July of 2017. I'd like to invite Daniel Brooks to come up and join me. Daniel? <laughs> Daniel Brooks uh, is an RN, BSN RN, and, and is our Hero Award recipient for July. He is a charge nurse and medical short stay and has been at Sarasota Memorial since 2015. While grocery shopping, Daniel, Dan followed the sound of someone falling to find a man unconscious on the next aisle. After an initial assessment, Dan found the man had a pulse but was unresponsive. With 911 called, Dan performed a sternal rub and helped return the man to consciousness. Dan stayed with his patient, asking him, uh, medical and medication questions that he passed on to EMS, including that he was on Coumadin and had a head injury from the fall. EMS transported the patient to Sarasota Memorial. When Dan arrived at work the next day, he was surprised to see the man was on his nursing unit, and ironically, Dan was assigned to, uh, was his assigned nurse, so talk about continuous care. <laughs> Thank you so much for making a difference. Mr. Carver? The Hero Hall of Fame. The Hospital Board of Administrative <coughs> Staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System hereby induct you, Daniel, into the Team SMH Hero Hall of Fame for actions that capture the essence of a true hero, including courage to have persistency in the face of fear, passion to always do the right thing, integrity to have a strong moral compass, and concern to have concern for the well being of others. And it's signed by David Verinder, our CEO, and myself as chair of the board. Congratulations and thank you. Well, uh, thank you for this award. Um, today actually happens to be my first official day of grad school to become a nurse practitioner. So thank you for the study break. Appreciate it. <laughs> Okay, and now we have a Hero Award for August of 2017. And our Hero Award this month is a triple play of sorts. Our all-stars are Liz Cook, um, an RN in orthopedics, uh, Samantha Perrin, an MST in medical short stay, and, Morgan, and Robin Morgan, an MST but ultra uh, float team. Can you all three join me? On April 11th, all three employees were on their way home from work when they witnessed the school bus accident. The bus was carrying 12 special needs children and four adults from the Oak Park School. You may, you may remember the media story that resulted in the, from the serious accident. At the accident scene, Liz assisted, assisted a child with a, with a head injury. Robin assisted EMS with a triage and treating of patients. Samantha rendered care and reassurance to several of the crash victims. Ultimately, the tra a trauma alert was issued and six children were transported to Sarasota Memorial. One was taken to Johns Hopkins in, in All Children's Hospital. EMS Division uh, Chief Carlson Sanders later, later sent a letter to Chief Nursing Officer Connie Anderson commenting, commending our staff for their assistance and support on the scene. Numerous SMH employees worked in concert to provide care for, the patient, for these patients and their loved ones. They did a great job. On the accident scene, our all-stars did the especially great job. Each went out of, her, out of her way to provide medical assistance, and all three are heroes and sir, for us and Oak, Oak Park School. Thank you so much, ladies. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you. The Hero Hall of Fame, and I, I just read this, but I want to read your plaque also. The Hospital Board and Administrative Staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System hereby induct you three into the Team SMH Hero Hall of Fame for actions that capture the essence of a true hero, 
including courage to have persistency in the face of fear, passion to always do the right thing, integrity to have a strong moral compass, and concern to have concern for the well-being of others. And it's signed by David Grander, the president, the CEO, and myself as the chairman of the board. And to all of you, thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you. Samantha? Thank you. And Elizabeth? Thank you. And for Robin? Thank you. Thank Would y'all like to say anything? They'd love to hear from you. Don't shake your head. You gotta say I just want to say it was an honor to work with our first responders, and it was not surprising to see team members there when I arrived on the accident, and it was a blessing. I never go that way. It was a God thing, and he sent me that way, and I just was you know, because of my experience here at the hospital, it was able, I was able to step in in an emergency situation as a team member and provide support to not only my team members here, but the first responders, which were amazing as well. Um, thank you, I'm, I'm humbled by this award. I think that um, anyone would have probably done the same thing in that situation um, and um, Sarasota Memorial, I, I moved down here a few years ago and um, I worked at Hopkins in Baltimore before I moved down here and I tell you this is a really great facility. Um, it's my understanding further when the, you know, the children end up in the emergency room that there was such quiet and calm that happened that it just kind of flowed the same way and um, you know, this is um, one of the best hospitals I've ever worked for and you know, I'm just, I'm humbled, um, so thank you. Thank you guys so much. I don't have much to say because they've covered it all, but like Robin said, the first responders were amazing and seeing SMH employees there was, you know, humbling and, you know, working together was a great experience, you know, outside of work. So thank you again. Mr. Carter, that's the end of my um, presentation. Okay, our next item on the agenda is the report of the medical staff, Dr. Scott Stevens, MD, our Chief of Staff. Thank you, I have nothing new to report. Okay. Next is the foundation report, Mason Ayers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wanna open my report by first uh, drawing your attention to our new sponsorship brochure. We just mailed this out to the community features all four of our events for this coming year. Um, if for some reason you didn't get a copy, please let me know, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, and also I just wanted to talk a little bit about our first event, which is uh, coming up in October, which is uh, Key to the Cure. Um, this year marks the 12th anniversary that uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, Sarasota is partnering with uh, Sarasota Memorial Healthcare Foundation to present Key to the Cure. Um, this year's campaign for the event is a little unique in that uh, we are focusing on 10 cancer survivors that were treated here at Sarasota Memorial. Um, they are going to be our honorees for the evening, um, really focusing on the mission of the event, which is to raise proceeds to uh, help provide cancer care services to the community. Um, this uh, ad that you see here is going to be running um, in all the media publications, as well as we've got a mini campaign going on throughout the hospital. So uh, look out for the Key to the Cure uh, marketing. And I hope all of you will be able to join us on October 12th from 5.30 to 9 at Saks Fifth Avenue. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Good, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Secretary's report, uh, Tram's not here today, so I think Jim is gonna give that report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, SMH board calendar, first Wednesday of next week, August the 30th at 8 to 9.30 a.m. 
the board budget retreat will be held the pyre room down the corner and around the street and at nine thirty to ten thirty there will be a special finance committee meeting held in the harrison room on tuesday september fifth at five zero one in the board auditorium there will be a preliminary budget and millage hearing on monday september the eighteenth will be our next scheduled board meeting starting at nine o'clock with the first positions group annual meeting ten thirty to, to noon will be the finance committee nine to twelve thirty peer review twelve thirty to two p m the board lunch issue and financial review and lastly from two to four p m the board meeting and the same day at five o one p m the final budget and millage meeting will be held well, thank, thank you, you Jim. mr chairman and i'll call on you again for the treasurer's report uh, thank you uh, I move approval of the bad debt and charity care for the month ended July 31st, 2017 in the amount of $17,945,000. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments for Jim? Um, yes, sir. As I have more convenience, what I'd like to mention to people listening, anybody listening to OTE, that number was for a month. Debt and charity care for one month, seventeen million dollars. One month, not a year, not a quarter, a month. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Any other comments? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> financial highlights. Bill Wolchin, our chief financial officer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have the highlights for July, and this represents 10 months of activity for the fiscal year to date numbers. And I'll start with operating revenue for the system. And for July, we had operating revenue of 65,237,000, as compared favorably to the budget of 56,962,000. Through 10 months of this fiscal year, operating revenue of 655,797,000 compared to a budget of 604,143,000. For the system total expenses for July, 58,659,000 compared to a budget of 58,612,000. Fiscal year to date, total expenses 609,162,000 compared to a budget of 600,147,000. For operating income for the system for the month of July, 9,650,000, which is generally an operating margin of 13.9%, compared to a budget of 1,445,000, operating margin of 2.4%. Through 10 months of our fiscal year, we have operating income of 76,878,000, which is an operating margin of 11%, compared to the budget of 34,943,000, our budgeted operating margin of 5.4%. Looking at statistics for the hospital, and these are all year-to-date numbers, fiscal year-to-date numbers. Average daily occupancy, 488, compared to a budget of 489. The admissions have our total 27,900, compared to a budget of 26,203. And our average acute length of stay, this so far this year, 4.51 days, compared to last year, 4.64 days. Continue with statistics. The hospital surgery cases through 10 months, 18,723, compared to a budget of 18,500. And so far, we've had 2,876 births compared to a budget of 2,884. Our outpatient registrations through 10 months, 365,019 compared to a budget of 370,935. And registrations in our emergency care centers total 103,136 
compared to a budget of 106,840. And so far through 10 months, our case mix index for all patients is 1.89 and for Medicare patients, 2.0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Okay, thank you, Bill. Thank you. We'll move to committee reports and start with our Mission Planning Committee Chairman, Bill Noonan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the Mission and Planning Committee met earlier today, Monday, August 21st, 2017. During that meeting, Jim Bouges, Director of Engineering and Campus Facilities, presented the bariatric suite plan at 5880 Rand Boulevard, which creates a bariatric presence at Sarasota Memorial's Healthcare Center on Rand Boulevard. This increases First Physicians Group space in the building and allows for expanded services, which are nicely aligned with Sarasota Memorial's Health Fit, a medically oriented fitness center also located at Rand Boulevard. The shortlist and rankings for general contractors as well as architects, engineers were reviewed and approved by the committee. So I have a motion. Mm -hmm. I move approval for selections for professionals for the design and construction of the Sarasota Memorial Bariatric Suite at 5880 Rand Boulevard as ranked by the committee in the public selection process and recommended by the Mission and Planning Committee as follows. For the general contractors, number one, J2 Solutions Incorporated. Number two, DeAngelis Diamond Healthcare Group. Number three, Willis A. Smith Construction Incorporated. And for the architect engineers, number one, Studio Plus, number two, MPAD, and number three, Vesselo Design. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, I'll continue with my report. Mm -hmm. Next, Pam Ramhopper, Chief Information Officer, reviewed Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System's Information Technology and Security Plan. Ms. Ramhopper opened the presentation with a review of the information system's leadership structure and areas of responsibilities. Diagrams representing the clinical and business application portfolio, information technology infrastructure, and current projects were reviewed. Ms. Ramhofer shared Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System's investment in information technology, both operational and capital, from 2015 through the 2018 proposed budget as a percentage of the overall healthcare system's operational and capital expense. Next, Ms. Ramhofer reviewed alignment of the information technology roadmap to the overall healthcare system's 2018 strategic roadmap as well as internal and external forces that influence technology and methods to leverage technology in support of the healthcare system's strategic roadmap. The committee meeting concluded with a discussion on healthcare security, including examples of national cyber attacks. Ms. Ramhofer informed the committee of the information system's proactive multi-layered approach to IT security, as well as next steps to maintain security in this increasingly challenging environment. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Next, we have the quality committee report from our um, second chair, Dr. Richard Raymeyer. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask the board to approve a deep sedation policy. The number of the policy is 00PAT.36, and it is sedation, moderate and deep. It's for adult and pediatrics. It has been recommended by the Medical Executive Committee and the Quality Committee. That is a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate <coughs> by saying yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Next, we have the Investment Committee. Jim Meister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Investment Committee met earlier today. The minutes of the February 21st, 2017 Investment Committee were approved. Tim Sand of Summit Strategies presented a report on the market environment and the retirement plan portfolio results as of June 30, 2017. Tim's report included a look at the three-year and five-year portfolio average returns 
the plan assets had a negative return of 2.83 percent during the quarter ended June 30th and has earned 7.51 percent for the six months ending June 30th. Tim also provided information on the SMH retirement plan performance in comparison to averages of, averages of other retirement plan portfolios. No motion necessary. This was for information only. Bill Volgen, CFO, presented information on the board designated fund investment results for the quarter ended June 30th. The enhanced cash fund had a return of five basis points during the quarter, but earned 63 basis points over the first six months of 2017. The intermediate fund had a negative return of minus 17 basis points during the quarter, but earned a positive 1.88% for the first six months of 2017. Both portfolios are invested in high quality securities. This concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Now we move to the President's report. David Verner, our President and CEO. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to start today like um, we, we always do with our um, report card for year to date uh, through July of 2017. And what we'll start with in uh, the service pillar, we'll look at our HCAPS um, inpatient uh, data, which shows us our number of domains at the at or greater than the 50th percentile. Uh, we have a goal of hitting eight out of 11. Um, I'm here to tell you we're a little bit short of that. We're at seven out of 11 as we've been most of the year. Um, and we'll look at the details on that here in a minute. Uh, on our outpatient side, uh, we have a, a goal of being number of domains at or greater than the 50th percentile fit, of being 55 out of 58 or better. I am happy to report we're at 57 out of 58 of those domains being at the 50th or greater. So congratulations to the team there. In the people pillar, we have uh, had a, an aggressive goal this year of having our turnover of our part-time and full-time employees within the last month being at a goal of 25% or below. Happy to report that w this is the uh, first, um, and this is a rolling 12-month um, average that we report here. Uh, this is the first time we've gotten it under the 25, the 25th, 25 percent number, and then we're at 24.07. So, uh, thank you for all of our teams that have worked uh, really round the clock on that, and really led, led by Lori Bennett and Lori Lang, um, our chief operating officer. In the quality pillar, we have a goal of um, infection prevention, our combined standard, overall standardization infection rate being less than 0.95. Happy to report we're much less than that. We're at 0.85. Uh, really remarkable when you look at the expected, expected from Medicare would be a 1.0. So we, we set our goal to be less than um, expected already and then we're greatly exceeding that. Finance pillar, you, you already heard from our CFO, Bill Wolgen, on our operating margin. We have a goal of making our budget of 5.1%. Uh, we, we are currently projecting the, to, to exceed that and, it, and coming in at 9.9%. On a growth pillar, uh, we've been busy all year, as everyone knows. Our, our goal was our inpatient admits and, and um, op observation outpatients were to um, be at 38,899 or better. Uh, happy to report that we are projecting to beat that number at this point at 42,288. In outpatient registrations, uh, we had a goal of being 799,000. Um, and for the first time this year, we're starting to project that we may actually beat that and be at 780,969. So um, good results there as well. Staying in the service area, we'd look at our HCAPS um, report a little bit uh, deeper dive. Um, you can see on the um, uh, the, the far left um, column is the current national averages, uh, and then our our data, which is in the green. You can see our numbers, and uh, you can see that there's four of them that are not in the green that are that are showing, um, you know, less than the 50th percentile. Certainly not our goal. Um, but we do have teams of people working on this, as we have all year. Um, and, and those four areas that we're, we're continuing to work on are responsiveness to hospital staff, uh, communication with uh, physicians, cleanliness of the hospital environment, and quietness of the hospital environment. So just to ensure the public and the board that, that we do have teams uh, working on this each and every day. 
Staying in the quality uh, section, uh, happy to report that uh, uh, Sarasota Memorial was named, was one of only 48 hospitals uh, nationwide to earn the top high performing ratings in all, not, all nine inpatient procedures and conditions evaluated in US News um, uh, Best Hospitals report for 2017-18. The health system also was recognized among the, the nation's highest performers, top, which is the top 10% in adult specialty of gastro and endocrinology and GI surgery. This year's ratings again earned <coughs> SMH a spot on the best hospitals list for South Florida. Uh, barely 1% of the 4,500 hospitals um, evaluated got the top rating across the board. So congratulations to all of our, our medical staff and support staff for that. Staying in quality, um, Sarasota Memorial is, Hospital is among the first hospitals in the nation to offer a woman, women a low-impact laparoscopic approach to many common uh, G, G, GY, GYN procedures. One that reduces pain and gets women back to normal activities faster after surgery. Gynecological surgeons Michael Swore and Kelly Ann Hartman uh, began offering low impact lap laparoscopic, um, laparoscopic <laughs> you know what I mean, at Sarasota, <laughs> at Sarasota Memorial's Cape Outpatient Surgery Center in March 2016. To date, they have performed a low impact procedure on, on more than 100 uh, gynecology patients with excellent results. So thank you to Dr. Swore and Dr. Hartman. Staying in quality, our excellence in nursing was recognized. Sarasota Memorial's nursing division has, been, has announced its most recent DAISY Award recipient, Laura Anderson, who's an RN in our labor and delivery um, uh, unit, third from the left here in the picture. This award recognizes extraordinary nurses for their superhuman work they do for patients and families every day. So congratulations, Laura, for this. In the people category, uh, our sim lab draws students to the healthcare careers. Advanced practice program coordinator, Melissa Shelton, who's a PhD RN, uh, kneeling in front, recently welcomed the Boys and Girls Clubs in Sarasota County to the SMH sim lab. Students got a firsthand look at how high-tech simulators help with patient safety training and learned about career paths and opportunities in healthcare. The hospital routinely hosts educational programs so students and community leaders can see how see health personnel in action. So I really appreciate uh, Melissa going the extra mile and doing this. Staying in, in the people section, we have our pharmacy residents uh, begin training at SMH. Last month, Sarasota Memorial welcomed six new pharmacy residents. Recently graduated from, pharma sco from pharmacy school, the residents will spend one year at SMH completing a wide array of rotations and projects, which will help them prepare for unit-based hospital pharmacist, pharmacist position or a second year specialty residency program. It's always nice to welcome these students each and every year. Continuing in people, our SMH family works to keep Sarasota beautiful. Earlier this month, SMH staff, retirees, family, and friends participated in the ongoing Keep Sarasota County Beautiful Cleanup project by removing 45 pounds of trash from local roadways. For the past 14 years, SMH's Bayside Center has coordinated the, volunteer, the hospital volunteer team. SMH also supports annual Mothers Helping Mothers Back to School project. In an effort to help kids prepare for the new school year, SMH departments, units, individual staff members, retirees, physicians, and volunteers from across the healthcare system donated more than 100 backpacks and many, many boxes and bags of, of school supplies and gift cards to the annual school supply drive. And just one of the things we're very happy to do each and every year. In the growth category, um, as the official health care provider in the 2017 World Rowing Championships, Sarasota Memorial will offer urgent and emergency care for the WRC athletes and attendees. The international event will be September 23rd through October 1st at the Nathan Benderson Park. SMH will also offer attendees free health assessments and evaluations during the event's expo days. Golden Ages Ex Expo on September 28th, which is Balanced Posture Memory and he Women Health, Health and Wellness on October 1st, which is Cancer Screenings and Information. 
As always, we have a number of upcoming programs and I would uh, lecture series uh, and then various things in our health connections and I would just invite everyone from the public who's interested in that to go to our website and see the dates that are coming up. They always fill up quickly. And then finally, uh, each year at this time, we, we always uh, put our, our urgent cares, our six urgent cares to work and doing school physicals. Uh, so for all those students, uh, student athletes, who forgot to get their school physicals in a timely way and need to, in a panic at the last moment, which would be most of them, um, we welcome you to our one of our six urgent cares and 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 we'll we'll give you a, a good physical and uh, get you going into your sports. With that, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, and I'm open to any questions. Okay, thank you, David, very much. Thank you. I don't think we have anything on the consent agenda. Any public comments, Karen? No, sir. Okay. Legal matters are um, Chief Legal Officer Carolyn Kelly. It is my legal advice that if you leave, leave here, do not look up in the sky. The eclipse is ongoing. <laughs> Thank you for that report. Uh, is there any other business? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>